So this video is going to be for solo queue mainly. I did a competitive tier list as well. So if you guys want to see that, I'll be releasing a video for that at a later date. So like, comment, subscribe, help with the algorithm, get notifications for when that drops. And then when Serena is coming out soon, I'll be giving my opinion on that on stream. So you guys can check out my stream down in the description below and then enjoy the rest of the video. So I guess we'll start with renaming them. So S tier will be the easiest characters to carry on. The or A tier will be characters that can carry well, but are not number characters that can carry with some work. And then we have characters that aren't easy to carry with. You might as well coin flip. All right, starting with Vinu. So Vinu is obviously very easy to carry with. He has the potential to 1v9. He can be played anywhere, jungle, any lane. He does well into pretty much every single character. He's extremely versatile. He might actually be the best solo queue character. Just period. Venusaur, very strong in solo queue. A lot of damage, a lot of AoE. Kicks ass, scales very well. Has good early game. Just a good all around character. He has a lot of sustain, obviously with uh, Pika Dream. That's something else we can do. We can talk about movesets. You're going uh, Petal Giga for this one. All right, Gengar. This character, uh, I almost want to put him in, you might as well coin flip. So. Gengar's biggest issue is that he sucks at zap and he obviously has no early game. So if you're going the Sludge Hex build, you don't start to really ramp up till you hit like level 9 or so. And if you're going the Shadow Ball Dream Eater build, you have like negative longevity in fights and Buddy Barry will just fuck you. I'm gonna put him in wide as well, coin flip. Both builds are okay ish. Mime. As far as like defender support kind of characters go, Mime is probably the best one. Does a lot of damage. Obviously going a uh, barrier and contusion, I think it's called. I don't know. Whatever the linear broken ass hit thing is. Um Mime has a really low cooldown ult, so you can pretty much ult at every single fight you want. There's a shit ton of damage, you can assassinate carries. She's a good character, has good lane. Starlax. Starlax is not easy to carry with. Starlax is okay, but he is an extremely team reliant character. Might unironically be better to run a flail and solo queue to carry. And flail is complete garbage. Don't play this character if you want to carry. Playing for funsies, I guess, but yeah, he's very easy to avoid right now, especially with like the prevalence of full heal and whatnot. All right, Gardevoir, this character is garbage. Dog shit early game, mediocre late game. Full heal counters her entire ult. Flash counters her entire ult. Having a brain counters her entire ult. Having a brain counters her entire kit. Gardevoir sucks. Fuck Gardevoir. You know what? If I think about it, you guys would fuck Gardevoir. All right, I should have worded that differently. Absol. Absol's decent. Like he can carry. He does a lot of damage. The biggest problem with Absol is. He has good, really good early game, but then he has no Unite move because his Unite is complete garbage. It's pretty much used for like the iframe in like very small chunks. Sometimes you can maybe secure objectives with it. And then he's extremely squishy. And he, so he has no longevity against like Buddy Bears. So when Buddy Bears are getting spammed against or like Zapdos or whatever, he has no way to like counteract that because he has to go in. He uses all his moves to go in. He has no way of getting out once he does so. And then you can just steamroll him that whole time. And then he's fucked. What he excels at is like catching people out. Like if he catches someone a 1v1, he'll probably force an ult or just kill them. But like against someone with half a brain, just don't get caught in a 1v1. This game is, the map in this game is really small. It's not like it's super hard to get caught or super hard to get away or be near someone. So for that reason, I don't like Absol. Garchomp. Actually, as a character, I think Garchomp is pretty slept on. I have like an 80% win rate with Garchomp in solo queue. This character actually does a lot. So. He's kind of weird. You're extremely useless at Dreadnought, so I don't even bother going to Dreadnought. I play him like a complete degenerate where I just like rush mobs until I hit level 10. I just power farm. Maybe I'll cheese Rotom if they don't come topside. And then I just hard scale. Once you get your five stacks on, you can shred through pretty much everything. I run him with full heal uh, and I go with both the dragon moves. I forgot to mention for Absol, you can go like whatever. Any combination is probably fine with Night Slash. Don't play Pursuit. Pursuit is garbage. Um, Gertrump has really good time to kill on objectives. The only issue is he doesn't really have secure. And is his Unite move? His Unite move. Yeah. Kind of sucks. Gertrump is not bad though as a character. All right, Lucario. Broken early, broken mid, broken late. You can snowball super easily. You can carry the game. You can do everything. You can secure all objectives for your team. You can be a broken piece of shit. Fuck Lucario. Play any moveset you want, this character is broken. All right, Crustle. Um, Crustle, so the reason why I don't put him in like might as well coin flip tier, right? You, maybe you could even justify putting him up here. You can just backdoor score on the enemy all day. You can do stupid shit with like stealth rocks and fluffy tail on your ults and you can steal Zapdos really easily. 
This will just like kind of BS. You can't really kill him do when doing that. So as long as you... You have to play Crustle in like a unique way where you never actually fight. But if they ever go for like objectives like Zapdos or whatever, just make sure you're there. If you like press your ult on top of it, they're never going to kill you without Zapdos also dying. Which means you just guarantee every single Zapdos is a coin flip at the very least. But also you do a shit ton of damage with Fluffy Tail and Stealth Rock in your ult in that uh, like small thing. So you're more likely to get it than they probably are. Plus you can like block like up or whatever because you can move around. I think Crustle is pretty decent. You don't really team fight unless you garner like a huge lead and well i mean i guess it is solo queue so you can't do that but realistically you shouldn't be able to all right next up is greninja i think uh so surf greninja used to probably be like by far the best character to carry with now that uh surf is gone and water shuriken is a thing again i think uh water shuriken is also very good but not number one like surf was greninja actually has a pretty decent early game once he gets double team you can gank pretty well. Water Shuriken, you're kind of mediocre until you get your ult at 9, but you should be strong enough at Bs to where... Or second Bs, I should say, to where you can get it. You have okayish invade, you can clear somewhat fast, so if you want to invade the enemy jungler and, like, steal their stuff, you can do that. Uh, he scales very well, he can kite very well, he has self-healing, he has good peel, he has the ability to go and assassinate. Greninja has a lot of things you can do, so... I think Greninja is very solid for carrying. Talonflame... Also another good carry character. Talonflame does insane amounts of damage, good objective secure, extremely low unite move cooldown. You can unite move at any fight you want and you'll have a backup. Unite move at like 240 and you'll have it up before Zapdos. Uh, very strong character. The only downside to Talonflame is her level 5 sucks, but if you get past her level 5, she's very good. She can sneaky back cap, she can assassinate people, she can snowball really hard, objective secure, very strong character. I think Fly Flame Charge is the better build. Charizard. I used to think Charizard was better. Ever since like Wiggly and like full heal meta, I am playing Charizard as much. Obviously we won a tournament on Charizard because I believe in it, but this is so like you tier list, so Let's talk about comp later on. I go Flamethrower plus Fire Blast. I think he's a good character for carrying on. The only issue is if you're trying to 1v5 and they use like five ults, when you ult, you're going to die. Or at the very least waste your ult, and then you're not gonna be able to 1v5. But if they only use like one or two ults when you ult, you can kill somebody pretty much guaranteed. Like obviously if they use like five ults to match your one ult, your team should win. But we're talking like carrying here. Your team is all coin flippy, I guess, for lack of a better word. Anyway, I think his early game is actually pretty underrated. His like level five is actually really strong. You can duel most characters, especially with the move speed from Flamethrower, being able to kite out people and then having red buff. He is slightly weak at level seven, but he's okay. It's like playable status. He has decent invade because he clears quickly. Overall, I think... Charizard is just pretty good for solo queue. Zera. Alright, so I'm not sure which. Either Zera or Venu is the god of solo queue. Honestly, maybe they deserve their own tier. But Zera is an absolute monster. Extremely low, unite move cooldown, discharge, basically being an ult in itself on a basic ability on a 10 second cooldown, ult switch to get in and out, has the ability to shred objectives, has the ability to shred entire enemy teams, is an assassin yet somehow an AoE team fighter with Kennen's ult on a basic ability. I don't know how the fuck they thought this character was a good idea. Zero is extremely strong. He can be played in lane, he can be played in jungle, it doesn't matter if he falls behind, he can just ult somebody at awkward timings and he'll have it back for the objectives and then he'll get catch up EXP for it. Zera is strong. He does well into like every character in this game. Cinder. Cinder's really good for carrying too. I think uh, he's pretty similar to Greninja where you just kind of like kill everything and kite. I, I actually don't think he's... I actually think it's easier to carry with Greninja in solo queue than it is a Cinder because Cinder has slightly less self peel. But the nice thing Cinder does have is he has really good objectives. He has a lot of damage to objectives, and he has decent secure. So I think Cinder, like, Cinder gets like a slight plus there, but he gets like a, a slight minus for his inability to kite as well as Greninja. And the fact that people can run away from you if they really want to. Whereas Greninja, it's a lot harder to run away from because his ult just like throws you on top of them. He's still a really good character for carrying though. You'd go Flame Charge Pyro Ball. Though I like playing Blaze Kick if I go uh, Attack Way because I like being brain dead. Brain dead. Um, Eldegoss. No, it's a support character and it doesn't really do a lot of damage and doesn't really burst people. Ooh, you save your bad teammates. This is not how you carry in solo queue. This character does not carry. It's like Blissey. Where is Blissey? Literally same thing. Does not carry in solo queue. Garbage. Stay down here. Cramorant. Um, garbage. He's like, okay. He's like an okay lane. He's like an okay ult. He's, like, he's just like, okay. He has to like CC. He does like some damage. I don't know. Garbage. Blastoise. Blastoise is actually pretty annoying to deal with. Probably top of this one. So Surf and Hydro Pump actually do a lot of damage to carries. His ult obviously got nerfed, so it doesn't do as much damage as it used to. 
I still think it's pretty strong though. The only issue with Blastoise is his early game kind of sucks before he hits 7. And then once he hits 7, he's pretty good, but he has really long cooldowns. So he has the potential to get run down during those that time. He can assassinate Squishies extremely easily though. Like he takes care of Cinderace and Greninja and Solik you so easily, especially if you don't have like an Aldegas babysitting them or whatever. Pikachu. Pikachu. The problem with Pikachu is she has too many cooldowns. Like her cooldowns are too long like later stages of the game and her ult only really kills one person so it's pretty hard to carry when you have such long cooldowns and your ult only kills one person and it's really easy to get jumped on. Pikachu is not bad it's just not amazing for solo queue. Nine Tails um same thing as Pikachu kind of a mobile character doesn't really have cooldowns you can do good damage to stuff but then what do you do when you're on cooldown bad for 1v9 like you go look at a Venusaur this guy has no cooldowns this guy just steamrolls your team the whole time this guy one shots, walks away, one shots, walks away, one shots, once walks away. You guys can't, you can't do this on these two characters. You guys don't have mobility. You guys aren't tanky. You guys get ran over. The talent flame that they inted is going to run you down. The zero that they inted is going to run you down. You cry. Wiggly, 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 Wiggly. So Wiggly kind of screws over like a lot of assassins. So I think she's actually pretty good to carry with. Like a lot of the good characters to carry with get fucked by this. I mean, these two don't. But like this, 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 and this, all get screwed by this. Her ult is bullshit. Sing is bullshit. Q Charm needs to be removed from the game. Uh, she actually has like weirdly decent objectives to carry with Dazzling Gleam. And she has a pretty good early game. She falls at level 4, so she should have it for Bs. She fits with like any team cop. If you want to dive, you can use her unstoppable. If you're getting dove, you can use the unstoppable plus shield. Just a good solid character to carry with. So, bro. No. Emma Swine. I put him down here with Snorlax. I actually think he's better than Snorlax for solo queue. At least Mama Swine has the ability to kill people early game and snowball your team. But his late game and uncoordinated play is pretty non existent. It's like really weird to have like a level 10 Evo character that is somehow better early game than he is late game. His early game is cracked. And then after that, he drops off a cliff. Machamp. I've actually been playing a lot of Machamp recently. I think Machamp is pretty good for carrying. So Machamp, if you go attack weight, you can just like ult their carries and one shot them. Dynamic punch and either cross shop or close combat. And you ult their carries, they die. The only problem he has is you can't shred objectives, which is actually a big issue because even if I like ult and I kill three of them or whatever in a single ult, which is actually extremely realistic. I do that pretty much every single game I play him. Uh, you can't like kill Zapdos in time unless your team is doing it and your team is often dumb. So I had a game I played yesterday where I killed literally four people solo with my ult. So I kill a Greninja and then I ult three people right afterward and I kill all three of them by my own or by myself. And then I don't have the ability to kill Zapdos because my team is being stupid and refuses to kill Zapdos with me. And then the, the Zero just ends up taking it from me. And we ended up winning that game, but my team really didn't deserve to. Besides the point. Decidueye. All right, so Decidueye, he's pretty similar to Cinder, but he doesn't have self-peel. And so he just dies to assassins. He does a lot of damage. He shreds objectives. He kills people. He's pretty good for carrying. If he had like some way to get assassins off him, he'd be good. But Decidueye is a character that's very reliant on having a support to be able to do damage. So like if they ever pick like Lucario or they ever pick Talonflame or they ever pick Zera or they ever pick Charizard, your Decidueye is going to die a miserable death. Greedent. Ooh, this is a hard one. I think Greedent goes up here. Greedent still kind of does Greedent things. He has good early game, control people at objectives, his ult's really low cooldown. Greedent is just a good character. I hate this stupid thing. You still go belch cuff it. You still be annoying as fuck. Still get cancer anytime you see him on your screen. Sylveon. Sylveon is like Pikachu or Ninetales, but better for solo queue. Sylveon actually has self peel. Sylveon has really low cooldowns. Sylveon has the ability to like block spells and whatnot. So even if they like try to like jump you with like their ults, like let's say Zero tries to ult you, you just calm mind it. Blastoise has ult you, calm mind it. Blah blah blah. Try to get popped. Try to get E speeded. Just calm mind it. Sylveon, very strong character. Probably the best like. Standard, oh no, second best, because Vina. Second best, like, caster. These aren't really ordered. Let me see if I can order them real quick. That's probably how I'd order it. The only ones I'm a little iffy are, it's like, Greedent and Crustle. Maybe Snorlax is too high, I don't know. That's it for this video. Once again, don't forget to like, favorite, comment, subscribe, whatever, help with the algorithm. I'm going to be putting out a comp tier list soon as well. And once again, Serena gameplay, when Serena comes out, going to be on my Twitch. I'm going to put out a guide for it, all that fun stuff. So... Subscribe, check out the stream, all those goodies, and I'll see you guys next time.